Uh, I want to play you an, an original, and then I want to play you one of the compositions that I've been involved with, with Jay-Z. Um, and normally what would happen is that we would scour through uh, old record bins, uh, record stores, and we would pretty much dig up whatever we could out of our parents' collections and things like that. So when we hear something that we like, we would use it, sample it, and I just want to show you an example. Um, the first song I'm going to play uh, is called Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. This is a composition by Bobby Blue Bland. Now what hip hop would do was listen to that and say that what he's saying is something that I want to express. So we took that and made this. What this shows you is that we take certain music and then we manipulate it and move it around. But in this record, we sampled probably four to eight bars of the song. So obviously it's pretty clear that we have to get a sample clearance for what we use. The problem comes in is when you break a song down into parts that are almost unrecognizable by the original user. So if I was playing this Al Green record, uh, one of my favorites is called I'm Glad You're Mine. Hip hoppers would love the fact that they're open drums on this record. Uh, that was one of our main things, was to find different bits and pieces of a record that we could then chop up and manipulate. So what I would normally do is through the use of a sampler, which uh, was invented in, in the late 70s, early 80s, there were first incarnations of it. But the MPC series was the one made by Roger Lynn that really kicked hip hop uh, into full gear. So what I would do is I would sample that drum break into my sampler and I would take just the drums. Uh, let's see where I put this. So that was the original. But what happens if I chop and break that all the way down to all of the individual pieces? So now, is it his composition if I do this? You know, that has nothing to do with Al Green, other than the fact that I took those drums from somewhere else. So that's where we get into the whole question of remixing and how much value is on intellectual property. Because obviously I'm changing his pattern into my pattern by using his original sounds. So this is just to give you a clearer idea of some of the problems that we face and some of the questions that have to be answered because the law as of yet has not been fully written um, and described in every situation. So we take every situation by case by case uh, situation and we develop the law as we go. But I would have been remiss if I didn't show you this process. So thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew.